Neon enables you to work with your data the same way you work with code. You can create isolated copies of your data, known as branches, and use them in your workflow. Here's what that looks like. So here I'm in the Neon console. I have a brand new account. If you don't have one, you can sign up for free at neon.tech. And the first thing I'll need to do is create a project. And you can think of a project as a container for the different resources you can provision. So if you're working on different applications, you'll typically create a project for each one. So I'll give my project a name. I'll call it demo. I'll choose a Postgres version. I'll choose 16, which is the latest version. And you'll notice that we have the option to provide a database name. So by default, when you create a project, you have a ready to use database called NeonDB. However, here we can actually name it to something else if we prefer. I'll just stick to the defaults. And the next thing is there's a call out saying your feature project is created with a single read write compute that automatically scales to zero after five minutes of inactivity. Now, in case you're unfamiliar, Neon's architecture separates storage and compute. Compute is what runs Postgres and what you connect to. And by default, if there are no incoming queries, compute will be placed into an idle state to save on compute resources, which is very useful. And by default, this period after which compute scales to zero is five minutes. However, on the pro plan, you can configure this period or disable this behavior completely if you prefer. And then the last thing is I can choose a region for my project. Now you should pick a region that is closest to where your app is deployed. So for me, that is Europe. And now I'll click create project. Now instantly we have a connection string we can use. And this is the direct connection to the database. And as you can see, it's called the NDB. Uh, however, we also have a pooled connection and this connection string supports up to 10,000 simultaneous, simultaneous connections which is plenty. You'll also notice that we have a bunch of code examples here for different tools and frameworks. However, I actually don't need this right now and I'll select, I'll do this later. Now to actually understand branching and to see it in action, we need to have some data. And to do that, I'll add data using the Neon SQL editor. So I'll choose it from the sidebar and you'll notice that we have some default SQL here. And the first thing we see is that in Neon, databases are stored on branches. By default, a project has one branch and one database. Now, a branch contains everything, your data, all the databases, roles, configurations, so that when you create a new branch, you can essentially copy everything from you know, this parent branch. And the default branch is called main. So this branch here is the primary branch. And the primary branch, as you can see, the compute endpoint associated with this branch remains accessible so that even if you exceed the project limits, well, there won't be any interrupted access uh, to the data, which is very nice. And you'll notice that in the SQL editor, we can actually run queries against specific branches and specific databases. So since I only have my main branch here and NeonDB, I'll now actually run a query against this branch and database. So what I'll do here is create a table called playing with Neon and insert 10 random values in it. So I'll click run and the request completed successfully. And I can actually view the data that's stored in my database using the tables page. So when I go to the tables page, I can select a specific branch and database and also schema. And as you can see, we have a table called playing with neon that has three columns, ID, name, and value. And when I click it, I can see the values that are here. So we have 10 records here. Now let's actually create a branch, which will include all of the data that is in this NeonDB database. So what I'll do is go to the branches page. And here on this page, you can see all of your project's branches and I will click new branch. Now you'll notice on the right that there are different ways to create branches. You don't actually have to use the Neon console. You can use the Neon CLI, the API, or also use GitHub Actions, which is useful. Now I can give my branch a name, let's call it demo branch and I can specify a parent. So you can think of a parent as the source, like which branch do we want to copy? And finally, we can decide or specify which data we want to include. And the default is current point in time. So what this means is we're going to include all of the data that's in the parent branch up to the point of branch creation. So once we click create new branch, well, we'll have all the data up to that point 
and branches diverge at this point. So any changes made to the child branch, so like the newly created branch, actually won't affect the primary. And we'll see what that looks like. So when I click create new branch, I have a connection string. And this connection string is actually different than the main branch, uh, main branches connection string. So if I actually go to the connection details widget, you can see here we have this connection string. So EP, silent, butterfly, bunch of numbers. And I can switch to the demo branch and you'll see that now this ID is actually different. However, actually this newly created branch has all of the data that was in the parent branch. So actually if we go to the tables page, you'll see that we have demo branch, we have the same table, and we have the same data. So if we switch to main, you will see that it's the same data. Now let's actually add more records to the newly created branch to see that these two branches are completely isolated from one another. So if I go back to the SQL editor and I select my demo branch and I'll just comment out the create table statement and I'll just insert more data into the playing with neon table and click run, you'll notice now we have, okay, we've added, we now have 20 records. If I go back to the tables page and I select the table, you'll see we have 20 records. And if I go back, to the main branch, you'll see that I still have the chain records, which is awesome. Now, sometimes when working with branches, you like the child branch is old and the main branch or the parent actually has a different schema. So instead of you know creating another branch, swapping out connection strings, we actually recently released a cool feature that allows you to reset a branch from its parent. So if I go to the branches page and I go to the branch that I want to update, I can go to the more menu here and choose the reset from parent item here. So when I click it, you'll notice that this says replaces all records with the latest data from the parent branch and note that current connections will be interrupted, but connection details will not change. So when I click reset here, this branch will just have all of the data that's in the parent and essentially like all of the data that's in the child branch, the branch that I'm currently selecting, will be replaced by all the data from the parent. So when I click reset, we can see the data on branch demo branch was successfully reset from main. So now if I go back to the tables page and I select my demo branch, we'll see that it has 10 records just like the main branch. So now let's give it a second. So now if I click on the playing with neon table, you'll see that I have 10 records. And that's it. This was a quick overview of how to get started with Neon, branching, how you can reset a branch. Now, there's actually more to it because you can use branching in development in your CI CD. And we'll actually link to a bunch of useful resources down below that you can check out if you want to learn more. Now, if you have any questions or run into any issues, feel free to reach out to us in the Neon Discord community. We'd love to hear from you. And with that, Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.